Good morning, everyone. Thank you and welcome to our session on engaging local leaders. We are excited to have everyone here. I am Charlene Quayle. I'm the Director of Economic Development and Housing for the City of St. George and also the co-chair of our local Homeless Coordinating Committee. I have the great pleasure of working with these wonderful folks from across the state on all of our homelessness activities and we're really excited to have such a powerful group an experienced and passionate group here to share some tips and tools and inspiration with us today so i am going to introduce um or excuse me invite each of these wonderful panelists to introduce themselves and as they introduce themselves uh, we are going to have them answer a couple of questions for us and kind of work in some personal and um oh provide personal whys about why they do this so um how long have you been engaged in the homelessness efforts in your community and really what inspired you to engage in what is meaningful to you in this work. So as you introduce yourselves, let's um, kind of touch on some of those things and um, give us a sense of what it is about homelessness that, that means so much to you. So let's start with Commissioner Kamalu from Davis County and um, tell us a little bit about your experiences and what inspires you. Thank you. So you said my name great, Commissioner Laureen Kamalu. I still like my first name, Laureen is fine. <laughs> and um, I can tell who knows me because Kamalu has many variations. <laughs> and um, it's my pleasure to be part of this. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it's funny, sometimes you land where you didn't think you would land growing up. Maybe some of the rest of you are like that, but I, I came from the business world. So I look at a lot of things with, a, with my background of my business um, lens. However, I have gone uh, full steam into public service as of January 2019 when I was elected as a commissioner. One thing that I bring with me from public service before I was elected a, a commissioner here in Davis County is um, planning commission. So I will say that for everyone, like my first tip, is to get to know the cities in the county and get to know the planning commissions in all those various cities. I was a planning commissioner for four and a half years. Very valuable experience. Great, thank you. Oh, and so passion, I guess, sorry, there's another part to this. You're good. Um, I don't know, the passion, I think I'm a passionate person. Um, and and I, public service just really grabbed me. So when there are, you know, there's always going to be challenges to figure out and I like, I like to help be part of solving challenges for individuals, also for organizations. Excellent, thank you very much. And we appreciate you being a part of this work and I'm excited to hear more about what's going on in Davis County later on. Um, Commissioner Kendall Thomas, would you speak to us a little bit about your experience and your um, perspectives on homelessness and what is happening in Tooele right now and what inspires you to be involved in this work? Well, how I got really interested in it is uh, when I was a kid growing up, I had a sister who got polio. I was probably six years old and uh, my dad worked two jobs. Uh, we didn't have great insurance and uh, there was a lady, who, and I remember the day that they knocked the wall out of our house to bring the iron lung in. Mm. And so we had an iron lung in our house for about 10 years. And I could remember that iron lung and the, and the pump, pumping the air into it to keep her alive. And there was a lady, and we didn't find out this lady's name for about 30 years later. She brought us a black and white television. She had the local furniture store deliver it to us. And that one act of kindness changed my family's lives. Generational change of lives. And so that's kind of where I got my roots to say, find out where one person can make a difference. Now, um, I've been engaged in uh, working with the homeless for about 10 years here in the county. And uh, we've identified about 40 people who are homeless or very close to homeless. And so that's one of the things that uh, drives me is when you see people in the parks, when you go to Salt Lake and you see those sad cases there, how can we help here? And the other thing that really, really drives us, like I'm sure everyone here, I believe in my heart of hearts, this is God's work. 
when we when I end up being conducting a uh, homeless our local homeless activity committee we have some ministers there we have different religious groups and just good people from the community I always tell them this is what God wants us to do so that's my long story short thank you very much that uh, the personal the personal experience and sort of what shapes our perspectives is always such an interesting part of our stories. And so I love, I love hearing this. Thank you. Mayor Pike, would you mind sharing with us um, your engagement and what that looks like and what inspires you to be involved in homelessness work? Sure. Thank you, Sherlaine and everybody. Um, I've lived in St. George for about 25 years. And when I moved here, what I found, it, it was not, not nearly as large as it is today. Uh, we've had a lot of growth in those 25 years. But what I learned was, frankly, if you wanted to be involved and help in some way, be on some committee or board, you pretty much just had to like raise your hand. And sometimes not even that. You just had to be here and know the right or the wrong, <laughs> or the wrong person. <laughs> and you'd get voluntold, as they say, uh, to do something. And so I about, I don't know exactly when, but probably somewhere around uh, 16 years ago, I was asked to be on a, uh, on a board called the Dixie Care and Share Board. And that was at that time, our homeless shelter. And they also had a food pantry, a small one. It was a very small place um, and kind of in the heart of St. George. And the reason I was asked to do it was because my, my job at that time and still my day job, if, if you know what I mean, you elected officials, I have a day job as well as a part-time mayor job that seems to be more full-time all the, all the time. But anyway, I work for Intermountain Healthcare. So they had asked me as, as a kind of a representative of the hospital to work, uh, to serve on this board. So I did. And I had no clue what was involved at the time. I was really unaware I was unaware of the needs, quite honestly. And in St. George at that time, um, it wasn't quite as, the needs weren't quite as obvious as they are today, and not as obvious uh, as in some of our larger cities, even in Utah. But I became, began uh, to be aware, and I realized uh, this was something that needed our attention. So I served on that board for, uh, for some time, uh, I think I served a term for maybe, I don't know, four, four to six years, and then they, they, um, they kicked me out. And um, then a weird thing happened, and I, I got a wild hair and ran for city council, and that was about 13 years ago, 13 and a half years ago, and I was um, fortunate enough to win. And then, lo and behold, my first assignment was to be on the Dixie Care and Share Board again, but this time representing the city of St. George. And, and so by that time, I knew a little bit more. And interesting, Commissioner Thomas, I, you know, one of the things I remember, this board had a very religious bend to it. And it was interesting for me, it was not sort of made up of a lot of people of my faith, but of other faiths. And I loved how they embraced that duty. I loved it. These people had a passion, uh, especially kind of my second time uh, through, that I didn't possess about this issue, and they really helped me to get more of a uh, the kind of passion that uh, Commissioner Thomas described. So, um, so my second time around, I did a, a little bit better. I felt a little bit more, and then seven years ago, ish. I was elected, uh, well, about seven years ago next month, I was elected as mayor. And right at that time, we were on the cusp and re we really just needed to do more. And, and we had a chance to get more directly involved with homelessness and intergenerational poverty. And I'll leave it at that uh, because there are more things we can talk about later during the course of this, uh, this hour. Uh, that will be more appropriate with those questions. But those are the things that got me started. And that's really, those, those are the kinds of people that gave me the passion to try to make a difference um, with my succeeding years being involved. Thank you very much. All right, so we've heard from our elected officials and um, now I would like to hear from the directors of a couple of our really 
important areas along the Wasatch Front, Weber County and Salt Lake Valley. Um, we have, you know, this session is about how do we help our LHCCs engage more of their local leadership in this work? And also how do we maybe help inspire some of those local leaders that might be watching? Um, how do we help them understand it a little bit more? And so I'm excited that we have kind of both perspectives on this panel. So let's hear from um, Melissa Freegang from Weber County, and then we'll hear from Catherine Fife from Salt Lake County. Let's, let's um, ladies, can you share with us what inspires you to do this and how long you've been in um, and kind of from the perspective of, you know, working with this population day in and day out um, and, and how, how does that impact you on a daily basis? So Melissa, let's start with you. Okay, sorry, I just wanted to make sure I wasn't uh, talking just to myself. Um, my name is Melissa Freegang. I am the founding director of the Prosperity Center of Excellence here in Weber County. And um, so I've been engaged with Weber County specifically in, in our IGP work since 2016. And um, we've had some pretty um, interesting successes and some innovations. And uh, we launched the center in June and we started engaging in homelessness and helping facilitate uh, our commissioner, who is the chair of the local homeless coordinating council for two counties, Weber Morgan. Um, we started helping him facilitate in about November. So we haven't been specifically in the homeless services sector for a very long time, um, but I have served on a host of agency advisory boards. Um, I really cut my teeth in Davis County um, I worked for the Clearfield Job Corps for 10 years, so um, did a lot of front lines work, did a lot of um, work with Safe Harbor and other um, nonprofits doing the work. So my passion um, specifically is really about how we can build our capacity as a community, what our community resilience looks like, our systems, um, strong systems, because I, I believe that if we have a really strong system, um, just like economic development for businesses, if we can create that same system um, that's strong, we can actually build the capacity of our nonprofits to really do the frontline work. So I don't work front lines in homeless services, but um, I feel like my passion is um, helping our service providers, which are about 42 um, that are in our area thrive um, within our system. Thank you, that's excellent. And Catherine, will you share some ideas with us and what inspires you? Yeah, I feel like I'm a little bit of a newbie um, to homelessness issues. Uh, I worked at Salt Lake County for a couple of years now and been involved with the Salt Lake Valley Coalition to End Homelessness, which is our local um, homeless coordinating committee and really supporting um, our, our community leaders, our elected leaders, our nonprofit leaders, and moving forward strategies to address homelessness. And it's been a really great experience for me. I have really enjoyed it. Um, I, I really think that, you know, I didn't, I didn't think I'd land here either. You know, just like many others, your journey is interesting and you just have to be flexible and embrace it and allow it to happen. Um, but really, I've been involved in the social, philanthropic, and public sector for my entire career. Born and raised in Salt Lake County and really been inspired by great individuals, great family, and others in the community who have inspired me to want to be better. And that's what I continue to do today. And I really have been involved in the back, and even though now with the coalition we're and the local homeless coordinating committee, I'm work all the time with people who are on the front lines and people who are making policy. Um, I have, have for a long time worked behind the scenes and really what I like to do is help to resource, help to strategize and help to connect. Um, so much like what Melissa said, we are working stronger together so that we can bring people who have different expertise and perspectives to all contribute to solutions that are really gonna make our community a better place. Excellent. Thank you. So I hear a lot of themes, a lot of community, a lot of working together, a lot of, um, you know, really realizing that this is a big challenge and locally we have this opportunity to 
uh, focus locally, but work across the state to um, to really end homelessness. I mean, that's that's the goal, right? To not have it be something that that we need to work on anymore. Um, what is it that you would see, and we have this framework around the state now, and we have a state strategic plan, and we each have, each of our LHCCs has a different role to play in that. Um, can you share from your experiences some of the things that are working within that framework uh, that we can maintain local autonomy, but still work together as a state? And um, also, some of, so some of the successes and some of the things that you see from your perspectives as both, um, you know, elected officials, but also from Melissa and Catherine, you may not be on the front lines, but you really are understanding what that frontline provider space looks like and what the needs are. So how do we kind of bring those two together? So we've got the state, you know, the state network, we've got our local LHCCs, and then we've got our, um, the, the power of bringing our elected officials and our government strategies together with the providers. So how, how does that kind of, can you share some examples of sort of maybe the nexus of where that's happening in your community or um, where you see that there might be gaps where, where local leaders can really help. And it doesn't just have to be elected officials, obviously, it can be business leaders, it can be, you know, um, all kinds of different capacities. But let's just kind of share with our, our LHCCs in the audience you know, anecdotal or data-driven um, information that, that they might say, ooh, that, that's something that's happening here and I can learn from that. So um, I'm just, yep, yeah. raise your hand and go for it. So Commissioner Thomas, I saw you first. Hey, and I appreciate that. Um, to me, there's a big disconnect between this wonderful plan on the state level and then myself as part of that local homeless committee taking this wonderful plan here and all of a sudden putting it into Tooele County and primary Tooele City. So the problem that I see having is uh, who's telling our message about homeless from the local homeless committee because it's great when we have the state come out and they give us this PowerPoint pre presentation saying what's going on but it doesn't hit the real it doesn't the pavement and uh, you, you don't get it on the ground. How does that, all these numbers and everything, we're gonna have all these wonderful programs. So that was a big disconnect for me as a, a volunteer person that, that was just getting involved. How do we make the help? How do we all these programs help that person who's sleeping out in the veterans park or sleeping on the back step of a church? And so I think it's really important to identify, first off, what is our homeless needs? And we have a great mayor in Twilla City who says, Kendall, who are your homeless? I couldn't tell her, couldn't tell her. And so it's very important to me as a local homeless, do we know our message? Who's telling our message? And how do we communicate that to elected officials? So I'll just put that in and I'll, let, I'll enjoy other people's comments about that. Thank you. I think that's a great point. And um, uh, Lorraine, we'll just go with Lorraine. Lorraine, uh, easier. You, you had your, your finger up there. What, what would you like to add? Well, Commissioner Thomas um, stated something that I also felt pretty strongly early on is that um, there's not one size fits all for individuals who are experiencing homeless. And so to, um, it's very individualized work, which makes it very rewarding work, but also very challenging work. When I came into office, um, well, before I came into office, we three elected full-time commissioners discussed the different responsibilities and portfolios. And, um, and I replaced someone who, who didn't run again, and he had a lot of health and human services. Health and human services was absolutely something that, that I was very interested in working with. I will say that um, it was very confusing. So this, I think, will help a lot of people. Um, it was very confusing to figure out all the different groups that existed and how they were different from each other. So what is an LHCC different from an IGP, different from you know, a multiple uh, human services groups? I actually inherited some very good work from commissioners before me who had that same experience of being confused. Because <laughs> again, we don't necessarily come from a background of human services, direct services to the population that needs, needs the help. 
And so um, one thing that very much helped me as an elected official is that um, our health department had a good grip and we actually, on every single um, agenda of any of these groups that meet, and Melissa Freegang has absolutely been in Davis County working in these groups, but we have um, a purpose and objectives for each of those groups so that they're not all trying to do the same thing. So alignment has been very important for Davis County and I inherited some good work that was done. So for example, the purpose of our LHCC is to convene to effectively address the various needs of individuals and families who experience homelessness in Davis County. And so within that purpose, there are three objectives. Number one, to reduce that number of folks. Number two, to house those experiencing homelessness as rapidly as possible. And number three, to actually prevent. And we try really hard to keep moving better into prevention space. So, I mean, this probably isn't quite as new, but there's so many people to convene who do the actual work. And, and that's, that's a big deal. So for us, school district, community action, our technical college, of course, our health department, um, something that I brought in that I noticed a gap was the grants administrator for the county was not involved and yet he's the one who works with the money and if you're trying to make change usually it's going to involve money right so I invited the grants administrator that's been a huge move that one thing has made a very big difference for us he he understands the lingo and and it's just on the county side a, a great resource to help close a gap so we also have housing authority here uh, faith groups, as Commissioner Thomas mentioned, um, Department of Workforce Services, Behavioral Health. We only have one shelter in Davis County, and it is our domestic violence shelter, Safe Harbor, and they pay, play a very key role. Um, and then our city officials, as I mentioned before, bringing them in, helping them to understand there are meetings that they have together. We're trying to present, inform, and, and help them understand. Another thing we we thankfully were able to do very easily. All we did was ask. Uh, we have a captain in the sheriff's office who is now involved in our LHCC. So law enforcement is part of the LHCC in Davis County. And um, we want to also bring in developers in the big business community. So those are some specific things that we've tried to do. Honestly, it takes every one of those people and all of their people. And um, that's where the work really makes a difference for the people. Great, thank you. So, um, Melissa, go for it. Yeah, so I really appreciate um, uh, the comments that were made from the elected officials um, because I think, from my perspective, and I'm assuming Catherine's the same, I think what's unique about the Center of Excellence and what we brought to the Local Homeless Coordinating Council is the work after the meeting and in between meetings on behalf of our commissioner. So, um, and, and I call that vertical alignment. So, um, I think that there's, when you have a local homeless coordinating council, um, even if you have an elected official, there is so much work to do to get the system organized, to even have the conversations, to even try to see what homelessness looks like, get the data, understand where the data is failing you, right? So I, I think that um, just getting organized in that vertical alignment is super important. And, and I will add that, I think the singular most important thing that we did was we went out to every single one of our providers. And you can, once you see, right, there's the head and the heart. So you get the heart of all your elected officials, including your mayors and your commissioners. Um, and once you do that, and it's easy, right? Because our elected officials, they don't do that for their own self gain, right? I mean, they are truly, truly public servants, whether you believe in their politics or not. I have found that every um, sort of elected official is really selfless and putting themselves on the line. So if you can show them and, and they can see the stories, then once you start to update them with the head, right, the numbers, they have context so that you can easily describe for them in two minutes this is what's happening with our homeless shelter. This is what's happening with our youth 
homeless. So once you provide that, I, it's a lot of ramp up and a lot of work, like uh, Commissioner Kamalu said, it's really, there's so much, but if you can get it organized and get at least one champion as an elected official, then they actually bring other local officials in and you can leverage things like industry and the economic development and the chambers as an example. I mean, lots of nonprofits are a part of all the chambers, but yet they don't necessarily all talk to each other. And so there's already methods and communication loops and lots of things that are already existing that if you just think a little differently about it, you can make those links and connections and all of a sudden you have a lot more synergy. But the first part is just to get organized so that you can actually have those conversations. Um, and, and just one other example, so our shelter, homeless shelter, is the shelter for all of Northern Utah, essentially. So it's, it's singularly the biggest shelter in the state of Utah, which is Lantern House. And so until we were organized, I couldn't reach out to Commissioner Kamalu to say, okay, how are we going to work with Davis County? And because they were working definitely hand in hand with the nonprofit, but how do we then support that effort and bring more to that partnership that makes it even bigger? So again, it's kind of, I think the head and the heart are really super important. Thank you. Yes, and it sounds like, um, you know, what you're describing, and I want to hear from Catherine next, if you have a moment, Catherine, if you're, if you're, if you're willing to step in. Um, really this, you know, the role of the LHCC and how, how can we leverage that role of the LHCC to help, help our elected officials do what they, you know, ran for office in the first place in order, you know, help them do that. And that is to serve the public and to meet these needs. And so, um, Melissa, you just shared with us some really great examples that can help play into both of what of what both of our commissioners had to say. You know, how do we tell the story? How do we help? How do we help touch the heart? And then how do we pull it together so that it makes sense and we've got all the information to make good strategic decisions going forward, as um, Commissioner Kamalu was talking about. So, Catherine, can you share some of your ideas about what's been happening in in Salt Lake? And then I'd love to hear from Mayor Pike too about just. Um, you know, your thoughts on, on this discussion and some of the things that you've seen from your experience in St. George. So Catherine. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, I've, I'm hearing the word we a lot and I really like that. I think we have a lot of work to do and it's not just elected officials, although elected officials care a lot and they have, they have large agendas and they do wanna help in so many different social issues, which is really important. And the thing about homelessness is that it ties in so many other social and other community issues such as health, mental and physical. We heard that in the um, earlier with uh, Margaret, um, with the keynotes uh, presentation today. Um, we have the economy and jobs and of course housing. And so whether you're talking to an elected official or another community leader, thinking about how, how issues that are really, really important and close to their heart, a lot of what Melissa was saying, impact homelessness and homelessness is not just in itself an issue that is solvable without talking about or looking at or thinking about how other systems and other issues are connected and it's broad and i look forward to the day and this is a lot of work that's happening in salt lake county and, and actually you talked about the state strategic plan it's it's a we around the state our communities are different how how amazing it is that we have the ability to have that individualized community input and leadership and even within like salt lake county all of our communities within the county are individual too and have their own unique needs and ways to address things and priorities and gaps and how unique we i mean how how important it is to recognize that and then look at what are we collectively in our own communities in our regional communities and then as a state doing to serve those who are experiencing homelessness instead of the what are you doing or what are they doing or what are our shelters doing it is what are we doing and we are all part of the solution together and I think that is really what helps to st strengthen those local um, the local committees is the is the we we're all in this together and 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 whether we are healthcare professionals or we are an elected official 
we all have a perspective and area of expertise that can help contribute to the solution. And that's really what we're seeing. We have a long way to go. We have a lot of work to do. And that's in, in within Salt Lake County too. We, we are so grateful for, uh, we have a strong mayor who's really committed to doing things to end whatever she can to end homelessness. Same with Salt Lake City, which is really the nexus of a lot of individuals experiencing homelessness and services. But we have mayors and elected and other leaders all throughout the county who really care. And um, it's great to see and just, and, and it's part of our job as a, as a local homeless coordinating committee to bring everyone together. Thank you, that was great. And um, Mayor, that's, that's a great segue into some of the things I'm guessing you might wanna share. Yeah, um, you know, it's interesting probably about nine years ago, um, I'm just guessing at the time frame, but probably about nine years ago, um, at least the predecessor to the LHCC in St. George was formed. And um, the city recognized at about that time, due to people telling us, they're going, look, there's not enough happening. We're not making enough progress. A lot of the things that um, my fellow um, um, uh, panelists today have been saying, we were we were being told, "Hey, you you guys aren't involved enough. You don't understand. This is there there are so many things going on, and we need your help to kind of pull it together." So the mayor at that time, it was my predecessor, Mayor MacArthur, assigned. Um, a council member, Jimmy Hughes is his name, to be on that committee, in fact, to chair it and really co-chair it. And uh, our economic and housing director at that time, Matt Liu, was the, the, the co-chair. And uh, there's a little secret most of you know, I'll whisper this, the elected officials need staff help to make stuff really happen. So Matt Liu and now Sherlane Quayle who's our host today, actually do a lot of the work to make that stuff happen on the our LHCC. Um, anyway, the nice thing there is, we've happened to be able to have continuity with, uh, with that council member. And he's a very conservative person. And this was not his issue whatsoever. Um, it was, but it's, it's become his issue. And then a little bit down the line, we had the opportunity to buy a building. And we recognized that there wasn't enough getting done and it wasn't maybe the right format. We felt like we weren't truly helping enough people to learn how to fish, as you all know what I mean. And so that's when um, entered into our uh, view, um, I'm gonna call her a zealot, but uh, someone with fire and passion and commitment, energy, more than the Energizer Bunny a million times over, and her name's Carol Hollowell. And she was working for our five county association of governments at the time. And she said, look, city, <laughs> I have some ideas. We need to set something up different. We brought in a bunch of folks from the state we went on field trips, fact-finding field trips up in Salt Lake City, and we said, what can we do here? And so we helped um, kind of get this started in a way, and we had never been this involved before. Um, you know, we had a council member on the Dixie Karen Chair Board, and that was about it. We really hadn't put much money to it in any way, um, and now we did. We bought a building um, that was a former... I'm going to call it a youth home. It was kind of like a big motel. And we bought it um, under kind of distress conditions. We fixed it up, spent a little bit of money. And we and then we employed that passionate person, Carol. And, and she, um, through a foundation that already existed, converted that to what's called now the Switch Point, uh, Friends of Switch Point. And she has a board. And we said, if we're gonna be involved in a big way, and by the way, we transitioned this to, to where we don't employ anyone anymore. We simply are the landlord. We own the building. We do provide some significant funding um, annually to help, but we, we stipulated that if we're gonna be involved in this way, we need two members 
of, of our choosing of your board uh, to, uh, so that we can keep our, our hands and fingers and eyes in this. Sherlane Quayle is, is one of those board members and then that same co-chair from the LHCC, Jimmy Hughes, council member, is on that board as well. It's really helped us to provide, to have some continuity between this major um, stakeholder, if you will, uh, switch point in our um, overall uh, community's efforts uh, to end homelessness and to aid in, in, um, in, in poverty and those in need. So that's been key, I think, is, you know, as, as I thought about it, especially after my sort of my um, um, training, if you will, as a previous board member, I realized uh, this, this, this one thing, perhaps. We're really focused as elected officials, commissioners, aren't we, on quality of life. We're always talking about quality of life. Well, who's focused on the quality of life for our homeless people, you know? Uh, they deserve our our time and our energy as well. And so we decided, um, and that was a critical time, I think, as a full support of the city management and the city council, we decided we're going to jump in in a bigger way. We're going to act like we give a crud about these people, and we're going to try to make a significant difference. And we bought into that vision of this this amazing woman who, by the way, was just named Social Entrepreneur of the Year um, for our Utah region. And uh, uh, so we bought in, and I'm not saying it's all perfect. It isn't. We have lots of uh, room to grow and, and, and room to go, but, um, but I believe we're seeing changes in people's lives, hence the name Switchpoint. They come to a point on the train track where if they're ready to make a switch, um, we believe we have the mechanisms through that LHCC, not just Switchpoint. There's about 20 or more agencies and nonprofits that are there to work together to help make uh, that help make those changes possible in people's lives. So, to me, that was the key: was helping, um, was having people in the community. This time, it was kind of just one or two people, mainly one, help us realize there was a better way and we need your help to do it. And the stars and planets aligned and we were able to get that done with a lot of help from a lot of people, especially from our peer larger cities such as Salt Lake City and Ogden um, and, um, and the state. Some people that aren't even there anymore that really helped us. And, and I think that's made a big difference. And it's given us all uh, as elected officials, especially at the city level, we're trying to spread this, not like COVID, but um, we're trying to spread this uh, passion and this um, the sort of the, the um, um, collaboration to the county and to our surrounding cities. Uh, we're kind of like the capital city of Southern Utah and so a lot, we're looked to do a lot, um, but we, uh, like Salt Lake, we need the help of surrounding communities. So I, I hope that answered the question, Shirlane. Thank you. Yes, it does. And I think that um, that last point, especially, you know, we've, we've been talking about the we and how we all have to work together to address this challenge locally as well as statewide. Um, the LHCCs are, are a great mechanism to, to do that and they do give us the autonomy to figure out what works the best in each of our areas. There are also a lot of best practices I think as we're hearing today that LHCCs can, we can share with one another and we can learn from. Um, and, and it's not just about engaging local leaders and saying, hey, come be a part of this, this is why it's important. It's about having the systems and the programs and the processes in place to actually support that work so that they can focus on being the champions and digging in. Um, the other piece that I'm hearing as we're talking today and um, 
and I, this is going to be my last point, and then I, I would like to kind of ask each of you for um, advice, and then we'll open it up for a couple of questions. But the last point I'm hearing is that it's it's not just about homelessness. It really is about this integrated work with all the other pieces in the community. So we're talking about you know not just the different the different municipalities and um, city and county governments, not just businesses, not just service providers not just nonprofits, not just economic development systems. It's all of that coming together. And so LHECs are, are, the, are the, the point for the homelessness challenges in our community where those things all come together. And um, I think that as we are looking both as LHCC leadership and community leadership, if we can start to understand, and this is what I've learned from all of you today, if we can start to understand that opening up our perspectives to always have homelessness on our mind, and how might this conversation that I'm having with this person today affect our homeless population or our homeless services or our systems locally and at the state level, we can continue to help inform how we're doing things locally, but also help us strengthen our, our um, work around the state. So those are some of the takeaways that I've gleaned from this discussion um, so far. And we have about 10 minutes left. So I would love to just kind of go around the panel one more time and you know, ask if you have any specific advice for either LHCCs or local leaders who might be watching how to engage, how to think about the issues. Um, just just you know, a couple points of advice from each of you for our audience, and then we'll open it up for a few questions. So um, Commissioner Kamalu, would you like to start? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so when I became the chair of the LHCC, uh, you know, others had a lot more experience than I had who were already part of that group. And um, during the year, that the leadership and some of the very key people who, who, who actually work with housing suggested that it might be actually better to have fewer meetings. Oh my gosh. And so um, rather than meeting every single month for 90 minutes, we stretched it out to go every other month for 90 minutes and with a, hopefully um, people working on things in between and spending their time instead of meetings to, to do actual making the change and, and working with the people. So I, I heard Melissa talk about that too. A lot of the impo most important work is actually outside of the meetings. <clears throat> so um, that's one thing that we did. Also uh, United Way, Catherine Zakara, she came in and she helped us to identify the root causes of homelessness. And <clears throat> um, we noticed that our numbers in Davis County had been going down in recent years, probably because of the um, economic growth and so many people needed in the workplace and it was a tight labor market and people who otherwise had a harder time getting jobs were able to get jobs. So it'll be very interesting to see what happens because of and after this um, pandemic, because you know we're losing some of that ground. Um, we, I read a great article that, and I heard this also from our community action director at the time, who said to just put people into housing and hope that that fixes everything <laughs> is a wish and not a, a reality. And so the article that I read was um, how important it is that um, along with housing first, treatment first, to help to, to the individuals with whatever it is, so we are very, very involved with the mental health and the behavioral health and the substance use treatments for the individuals, if that's part of, of the challenge that they're dealing with. Um, we talked a little bit about systems. We're looking at our criminal justice system, even re-entry as people are leaving. You know, what's going on? Where do they have a place to go there? So mapping out these systems is, is all part of it. Um, two last things that are specific items we are working on. The Human Services Directors Group, which is a bigger group, but it has those same LHCC players. Uh, we are working on a common entry form so that uh, there's a no wrong door approach. This is bigger and more challenging, you know, than it might seem because <laughs> uh, organizations have to still do whatever is required for the grants that they receive. But we are actively and we have been actively working on that. We, we hope we get to a place where there is something that makes it a lot simpler 
for the individuals to, to navigate the system, right? And utilize multiple agencies for, for the help that they need to get on their feet. Finally, um, one city, I want to say the name, because we have multiple cities doing some good work and, and others who we want to work with some more to better understand, but, but one particular city, um, they invited the community um, housing authority director to their city council meeting, and they wanted to better understand um, what they could do. And so um, to, to highlight the cities and the commissions and the planning, you know, that is going on to, to spotlight that, to highlight that, to celebrate it so that we create a, a vibe around this great effort seems to be very important. Great, thank you, thank you. All right, Commissioner Thomas, if you had one piece of advice that you would give our audience, what would it be today? It remuted. <laughs> there we go. Hey, who's singing our song? Who's giving our message? You know, what is our message? Who's hearing our messages? Who's hearing our successes? Who's hearing our failures? And then one last thing is, when we have our, local, our committee meetings, are we given assignments? Is there involvement? Do we give pe People will come if they feel needed, if their time's well spent. So give them something to do, have them return a report, and let's make sure we sing our song. Don't leave it up to somebody else. They might not sing it as good as we do. Very so, good. Great advice. Thank you. Catherine, is there um, anything you'd like to add and a piece of advice for our audience? Oh, I love it. You need to have evangelists. Uh, it was a word we've heard today. We need to have people regularly informed using data. Um, but I think in order to get some of the evangelists, you have to really give them that personal experience. Invite your elected officials and community leaders to participate in your point in time count and other uh, activities in your local homeless coordinating committee. It will help um, and it will really help people understand and then become those evangelists, tell your story to sing your song with information and data to support it. Excellent, thank you. Mayor Pike, do you have a piece of advice? Yeah, just very quickly, um, all these are great suggestions. Uh, I've, I've really, um, I'm, I, I'm touched by data and emotion put together. So I love that when Switchpoint, for example, has produced videos that, that talk about, that show success stories. That's compelling uh, to me. And so I would share those kinds of tell and show those kinds of success stories to everyone that you can back to the uh, evangelists, you know, um, who's telling a story. Uh, let the people tell the stories themselves. Uh, you can help them a little bit and that will help your elected officials and the public, your donors, everybody. I've seen that be done very effectively by some and and also kind of number two. We need to all be striving to do whatever we can to do best practices. You know, show that it's working, show that it's having an impact. And I think that will help us as we're seeking funds and support. Fantastic, thank you. And Melissa, let's. Yeah, I agree with everything everyone said, obviously. Um, and I would just add maybe to everybody's comments, the way maybe to do that is to put on your social entrepreneurial hat, um, like Mayor Pike mentioned, because when you do that, you do start to map the services. Um, but most importantly, this is all about relationships. So when you want to find that person who's your champion, um, the, the service providers that are on the local homeless coordinated council, they have the subject matter expertise, they all have advisory boards. And I guarantee you will have multiple people who are so interested, they just don't know how to engage. So my recommendation is when you put that social entrepreneurial hat on, you can do all the things that we talked about and then you can cross sector, right? Because then you can look at the industry member versus the elected official and everybody knows everyone. And, and this is even in our community, which our LHCC is about 80 people large, Everybody knows everybody still. So um, I would just say that that word of mouth is how you actually get a lot of this stuff done. And if you think a little bit differently about it, then you can bring new solutions to the same problems or vice versa, but really leverage the subject matter expertise 
within your LHCC. Excellent. Those are all wonderful um, points of advice and so much experience. Commissioner Thomas, do you have something else to add? Yeah, thanks to Twila is now incorporated into Friends of Switchpoint. We had a Lutheran minister who went, we was all frustrated. We'd run out of gas as our uh, homeless committee. He went to a meeting much like this, but it was in person, heard Kara Hollowell talk. Thanks to her involvement, Twila is moving forward. We, our biggest block, we didn't have a building. She has helped facilitate getting that building. We're moving forward because now all the pieces have started to come together. So anyhow, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Appreciate that. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. That's another really great example of um, the statewide collaboration and communities helping each other. And I will say, I'll just share with, with, this, um, with this group, as a member of the Switchpoint Board, we had deep discussions about how that looked and, you know, was that good for for what we're trying to accomplish in our community, how what were all the benefits for both us and Tuila, and how could we really leverage those things to work together? And there, it was it was just a yes. It was like yes, we we can you know we can make this happen. Carol being an energizer bunny does not hurt either. She definitely has every gene and every every her DNA is social entrepreneur. So um, well, we are at time. Stephanie, do we have any questions? I'm okay to go just a couple minutes over if you are. I can't see if there are questions. Um, yes, so we have one hand raised. We really only have time for one quick question. Um, we have to start the next sessions. Um, but we have Robbie BW on the line. Um, if feel free to ask your question. Yeah, so I'm a case manager at the Road Home, um, working with families, and I really appreciate this session. That stated, um, last year we had a training where I was told we have the 50th uh, ranked access to mental health. And it seems like that would really help a lot of these challenges that families are dealing with. Is there anything specifically that you all can do to increase our access to mental health? Because I feel like that's probably not a trajectory we want to be on. Go ahead, Melissa. Yeah, I would do an asset map within your community of all the various mental health resources that you have. I'm sure when you start to really look at that, you'll see that there are multiple that can be free. You can also talk to your LHCCs around, um, can you get people eligible for Medicaid if they're not covered by health insurance? Um, on your LHCC, you probably have your public mental health, and if you don't, invite them to the table. Um, and then actually have a, a very specific conversation with them about homelessness and try to understand their system first. And once you do that, you'll be able to navigate it, not only for yourself, but on behalf of your clients. Excellent. Thank you. Catherine. We're probably out of time, but Robbie, you know, you're part, I think you're a part of the Salt Lake uh, Valley Coalition and Homelessness LHCC. want to just invite you to be a part of conversations. We have a health and wellness core function group that meets to talk specifically about the mental and physical health needs of those in our community. Um, we have some great uh, experts on the topic um, and who are involved, and we would love to have you involved as well and others who can help us move the conversation forward because there are, it is important, we need more resources. Um, we do have resources. We also need to make sure that we're, we're appropriately connecting with some of those mental health resources that already do exist in our community, which we found that there may be some disconnects there. So. Um, yeah, we have a lot of conversations, to, a lot of work to go and, and invite you to be a part of that conversation here locally. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to our panelists. Thank you to our participants for being here today, for sharing your ideas um, and advice and inspiring us. I've learned a lot and um, I'm even more inspired to continue doing this work. I love it. And I love that I get to work with each of you. So thank you again. Thanks Stephanie and the team for uh, managing the session and we will see you soon. See you later. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye.